In this video, we're going to see how digital signatures work with RSA. And so what I want to do is recall the setup that we had from our original RSA video where we showed how Alice could send a message to Bob using his public and private keys. So from that video, Bob's keys were as follows. He had chosen a public key of 571 and 1073 and he had chosen a private key of 835 again 1073 and the setup we had there was that Alice wanted to send a message to Bob and the message she wanted to send uh, was the number 331. So the way that she did it was to send this, she computed a huge power, uh, 331 to the power of 571, you know, which turned out to be 829 mod 1073. And then what she did is she sent that number, 829. And that was the encrypted message. Now, Bob then would receive it, and he would decrypt it by raising 829 to the power of his private key. The situation that we want to discuss now is, what if Alice wanted to send this message to Bob, but there was an eavesdropper that we'll call Eve in the middle of who received the message and tried to change it. So Eve intercepts um, this message 829 and then changes it to maybe say uh, 851. Again, this is all mod 1073. Then what would happen is Bob would get this message, 851, be none the wiser about the fact that Eve had intercepted and changed it, and then Bob would decrypt the message in the usual way by taking the number that he received, raising it to the power of his private key, and then that would turn out to be 185 mod 1073. And he thinks that that's the message Alice intended to send, when in reality, it wasn't. Up here, it was 331. So digital signatures in RSA are going to be a very simple way of preventing this trickery from happening. So let me explain how that works. One of the key ingredients in this is going to be that Alice also has a public and private key. So let's for the purpose of demonstration, choose some keys for Alice. So Alice has keys. Uh, let's say public for her is uh, 103 2059. And private for her, Alice's private key is going to be 647 comma, again, 2059. Now, the way that she's going to be sure that Bob receives the message she intends, no matter what Eve tries to do in the middle, is that uh, with her original message, so with 331 raised to the power of Bob's public key, 571, which turned out to be 829, She's also going to send something else. So she also sends uh, 331, the same message, raised to the power of her private key, 647, which turns out to be 1,235 mod the other number in her private key, 2,059. Now, why would she do that? This gives Bob a way of verifying that the message actually came from Alice.
because what he can do upon receiving these two numbers, so Bob receives two numbers now. He receives 1,235 and he receives 829. Now he knows that this second component is the encrypted message, so he decrypts as usual by taking the power of that number raised to his private key, so 829 to the power of 835, and he gets 331. Again, mod the other number in his private key, 1073. Now he takes the other number and he verifies the message. So he verifies the message using the other number. And the way he does that is he takes 1,235 and raises it to the power of Alice's public key, 103. Again, this is all mod 2059, and he finds 331 again, so mod 2059. So why does that work? This is because the number 1235 came from Alice sort of encrypting the original message using her private key. That means it can be decrypted using her public key. When Bob sees that that works and he gets a message here that matches the other, he knows that it must have been Alice that sent this because only she could encrypt the message using her private key so that the public key would undo that encryption. Now, to be totally clear as to what I mean, let's suppose that Eve tried to do the same trick as before. So, suppose as before, we had Alice sending a message to Bob with an eavesdropper Eve in the middle. And suppose that Eve tried to change the message in the same way. So Eve changes what she sees go by. So 1,235 comma 829 to 1,235, 851. Well, if that were the case, then Bob would compute uh, sort of the decryption of 851. So Bob computes uh, 851 to the power of his private key. And uh, what he would find is that that's 185 as at the beginning of this example, mod 1073, and then he would do 1235 to the power of 103, Alice's public key, and he would find that that's 331, mod uh, 2059. And since these numbers don't match, he knows that there's been some tampering. Now you might ask yourself, why doesn't Eve just change the other number as well in order to make it so that these do match when Bob decrypts them? Well, the point is she doesn't know what to change that other number to unless she has Alice's private key, which she doesn't, which means that this is not going to be something that Eve can tamper with without breaking the verification method that Bob uses to ensure it comes from Alice.